Hello my lovelies, this is your British lady from M's Diary. I do apologise for last week's video not having been properly edited. My laptop kept crashing while I was trying to save my uh, video to Sony Vegas Pro so it wouldn't render properly and I just didn't have the time to keep keep editing it. So this week's video guys is about again the differences between Canada and as you can see by my sweatshirt England or the United Kingdom we want to include our Irish Scottish and Welsh neighbors obviously it's part of the UK so first difference here we're going to talk about is money shoe sizes and um driving which I will try to illustrate in pictures if my computer will let me upload pictures while I'm editing this time so the money here we've got the five pounder this is our five pounds with the course Queen Elizabeth and there's another bloke for the life of me I apologize I don't know my history well enough this bloke on this side of the five pounder if you guys know who this bloke is I don't think it's King Henry the eighth I should have known this anyway it says here on the five pounder I have nothing to offer but blood toil tears and sweat Oh, I think this is Churchill I think I think this is Winston Churchill I think that's what it says here if we look closer to the five pounder so the Canadian five pounds on the other hand is quite a bit bigger in size I'm not used to dollar bills being so tiny it kind of makes me think of the UK being small in size the country's small therefore the five pound is small. If you compare the five Canadian dollars to the five British pound, you see the difference here in size, guys. Like this is a tiny, this is a huge difference in size. Even I think the American dollars are bigger than the British pound. North American money in general is bigger than British money. So here we've got Wilfred Laurier. I know my Canadian history. Sir, Sir Wilfred Laurier on the five dollar bill. My grandfather, my British grandfather, when he moved to Canada back in the 1970s, he taught me my history and, and all the men who were on the back of the Canadian dollars. Obviously, the Canadian money was different back when my grandfather was alive. We didn't have the waterproof money the way that we do now. But I think we still got the same people on the back of the dollar bill. They didn't change that. They just changed the design of the bill. So this is Sir Wilfred Laurier. I've got to look up my Canadian history again. I know he was a political figure of some kind. I think the Liberal Party, I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. Don't quote me on that one. And of course, we've got this design here on the five Canadian dollars. So you notice they're both same in color. They're both waterproof. They're both fireproof. And they're both the same color. So there are quite a few similarities when comparing Canadian money and American money, which I can do in another video um oh yeah we've got the 10 pounder too i don't think i've got any 10 canadian dollars i'm afraid or 10 quid but this is 10 quid here for the bank of england guys this is really small and it's really cool what i like about british money is that you know it's quite easy to sort through the currency when there's a currency difference with switching countries because the 10 pounder is a little bit bigger than the 5 pounder because of the value of the dollar as you can see here holding them up side by side and then there's a woman on the back here I've noticed with the Canadian money we've pretty much got men on the back of our dollars but here there's a woman and apparently she's the governor and company of the Bank of England it says I declare after all there is no enjoyment like reading as you can see the quote here i should know who this woman is i should have done my research beforehand so i apologize um and her name is jane is this jane austen i can't read what the back of this letter says it says jane something i don't know if that's jane austen it must have been jane austen but that's i think that's what it says i think that's jane austen so that's really cool that we've got woman on the back of our British pounds whereas Canadian money I don't think it does I think it's all men all men on the five dollar the ten dollar the twenty dollar the fifty dollar bill and of course the one hundred dollar bill I 
think we got rid of the $500 bill. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, Canada used to have a $500 bill many years ago when my grandfather was alive. And we also had the penny, which of course went extinct in 2013. So America has a penny, United Kingdom has a penny, but Canada is the country that doesn't have pennies anymore. It went extinct, which I think is stupid. But the government wanted to phase them out back in 2013 for whatever reason. It was costing them too much money to make, apparently. So, so that is our um, Canadian and British money. Um, let's see. I'm going to share you guys some coins here as well. These are, these are all British money, of course. My Canadian money is somewhere else, but this is the one pounder. And we've got a loonie in Canada. We have loonies and toonies, which is similar to British money again. I think we've really copied Brits when it comes to money. Because we've got a toonie, which is like a two pounder. We've got a two dollar coin. This is... Here is two pence. We don't have two pence in Canada, so I always thought that was quite fascinating. The two pence here. Um... It always threw me off that there was two pence. It always kind of confused me. Again, the pounds. In America, of course, their their dollar is like a dollar bill. And then we've got two pounder, which is, I think, slightly bigger than the Canadian toonie. So, yeah, that's British money for you guys. I was very confused when I first moved here when I was counting my change. It took me a little while to adjust to the coins. And the dollar bills are pretty straightforward. It's just the coins that were difficult for me to adjust to, like I said. So, there we go. I'm going to put this back. And I'm going to try and grab my Canadian money to show you guys. I've got a big container full of Canadian coins when I first moved here. I never really wanted to get rid of them. And they wouldn't take coins very much because of COVID. And I don't think the currency exchange here in Britain exchanges Canadian coins for British coins. I think they only do dollar bills, which I think is kind of stupid, but let me go and grab the coins and show you guys um, my Canadian coin collection. This is my Canadian coin collection, guys. This is it, right in this Quality Street container. Another thing that I love about Britain is the Quality Street chocolates. We do have these in Canada as well, but we don't sell them as often as Britain does. I think we've only got them, like, sold them during Christmas, whereas the UK actually sells Quality Street, I believe, all year long, from what I've noticed here. So, let's see the differences between Canadian coins and British coins. So here is the Canadian toonie, guys. This is the Canadian two dollars. I'm gonna like hold it up next to the British pound here, the two pounder. Show you guys. Uh, if I can find it, give me a minute. Too many coins here is the problem. Let's see. I had it in my hands. Here we go. So, there we go, guys. The, the pound is around the same size as the toonie, as we can see here, guys. The two pounder and the Canadian toonie. I believe the Canadian toonie is slightly smaller in size, as we can see. They do the opposite colors. The Canadian toonie has the gold inside where the polar bear is, and the silver on the outside. Whereas the British pound has the silver on the inside and the gold on the outside. So I think it's quite interesting that they make a contrast. And of course, we've got the queen on both sides of the coin, which I find very interesting how with Queen Elizabeth is on uh, both sides of uh, the coins here, as we can see. So that's quite interesting. Um, I think I should just put all my chains together, but I don't want to get the British pound mixed up with the Canadian dollar. So, oh, this is loony, guys. This is the Canadian loony. This is the one dollar in Canada. We've got the Canada goose on it, which makes a lot of sense. Canada goose, see? And, of course, the queen is on the back of it, just like British currency and Canadian currency. It's always the queen at the back. 
We're still under the, the Queen Monarchy, as far as I'm concerned. If we still got the Queen at the back of our coin, we never really gave that up. So, oh, and this is the, um, oh, the Tale of Peter Rabbit. That's a very interesting design to put on a coin. They've got, like, a rabbit here. So I find that quite interesting. So this is, I should know this amount by now, this is... Doesn't even say the amount of the coin on here, that's so weird. Oh, 50 pence, my mistake. So this is 50 pence. So in Canada we've got quarters, we've got like 25 cents. But in the UK, we've got 50 pence. So this is 25 cents, guys. Here in Canadian currency. This is 25 cents. And this is 50 pence here, so we can tell the difference between the Canadian quarter and the American, no sorry, the British 50 pence and the Canadian 25 cents. Pence and cents, they both rhyme. Just like squid and quid, so yeah. That's significantly bigger than the Canadian 25 cents, as we can see. Significantly bigger. And here's the rabbit design. So, yeah, I really should separate this. I, I gathered all my British currency and my Canadian currency when I first moved here, and I put them all together, which wasn't the smartest idea. Oh, and this is the British penny. At least Britain still has their pe their pennies. We can't say the same thing about Canada. If I had a Canadian penny, I'd show you guys, but it's kind of from eight years ago, so I don't really have a lot to show you in that regard. So that's really it for coins in terms of coins. Um, yeah, I showed you guys the two pence. This is another design on a Canadian quarter. Sometimes they change the designs on the quarters every couple of years or so. It's a very unique design. So, um, yeah, we've got two pence I already showed you. That looks like an older coin, much older, I think. The two pence here in Britain, which we don't have in Canada. So that's very unique. Um, let's see. Oh, we've got the dime. I can show you guys a Canadian dime. This is a British dime. No, this is the five pence. My mistake, five pence, which would be a nickel in Canada. We call them nickels in Canada. Five pence, five cents. This is five pence in UK. Um, and that's the 20 pence. Which again, Canada does not have. We've only got 10 cents, which we call a dime over in Canada. Oh, and here is the Canadian dime. We're in luck, guys. I found a dime. Here's the Canadian 10 cents. Hopefully you guys can see that fairly clear in my camera here. So that's 10 cents Canadian. That's what we call a dime to educate you guys. Um, and I think that's about it. I can't really see any Canadian nickels, guys. If I find Canadian nickels somewhere, I'll definitely let you guys know. But unfortunately... Oh! Speak of the devil, I found it, guys. Here's the Canadian nickel with the beaver. You see, this is the five cents we use in Canada. This is Canadian currency with the beaver. We're very proud of our beavers in Canada. I, I'm sure that the UK has a few beavers, but Canada probably has a lot more. It's the beaver dam right there. Hopefully you guys can see that fairly well. So that is the five cents in Canada. That's the nickel, guys. So there we go. That's the end of it for the currency. I'm going to show you guys the shoe sizes. So I'm a size 6 UK, which is American and US sizes or Canadian sizes. That is a size 8 in Canada and the States. So when I first moved over here, it was kind of weird because a lot of size sixes were either too big for me or they were too small, depending on the brand that I went to. So it was confusing. I had to shop around to find the right shoe size. For example, today I looked at a shoe store and their size six was far too big on me and their size five was too small. So I think in UK size, I'd be a size five and a half. It amazes me that a size 6 UK was actually too small for me, it was too big. So it's very weird, the shoe sizes here. I've got to admit, UK shoe sizes don't seem to fit my feet very well. I'm either a 5.5 or a 6.5, which is kind of challenging to find. 
So these are the shoes that I bought today for eight quid. I got these nice pair of flats for eight pounds, guys. And as you can see, size six. You can see that that is a size six on the bottom here. Size six, as you can see, so that would be a size eight in American sizes. That's one thing else that confused me when I first came here was the difference between the shoe sizes and the clothing sizes. I find shoe sizes are obviously a bit more straightforward because pants, like if, if it's small, medium or large, that's obviously universal. Or if they measure it by your waist size, that's universal. But in the UK, like a size 10 pant would be like a size 6 in the States. Or a size 8, I think. Yeah, size 6, so two sizes behind. So if I was size 6 in pants in the States or Canada, I'd be a size 10 here in the UK. Which sort of confuses you when you first move here. It's hard to wrap your head around the whole thing. Um, and then, I guess if you've got American stores here that are here, it does make it easier to shop at. Like H&M, they've got over here. That's pretty straightforward with sizes for the most part. Because they do it by like small, medium, or large. Or like a size 2 in the US and Canada, I guess, would be like a size 4 or a size 6 here in the UK, I guess, depending on the brand. So, um, another thing here is the tiny roads. The sidewalks I've noticed here in London seem to be a lot more wide than Toronto sidewalks, depending on where you're going. And the roads are more narrow, I think, because they want to make more room for bicycle paths, for people to cycle. Um, and obviously, sometimes I still get on the wrong side of the car instead of going on, like, the right side of the car. ...side of the car, thinking that's where the steering wheel is. It's very confusing. So, like, you want to go on the passenger side in the UK, you want to go on the left side of the car, not the right side. So that's a bit of a mind boggle when you first get here. That's all the differences that I have for today, guys. I'm going to make a video, another video about the pros and cons of living in the UK. And my favorite things of the UK, what I like about the UK, and what I dislike about the UK compared to living in North America. Please give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Share it with your friends if you guys like. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe bell, the ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. will remind you to keep subscribed to my videos about British culture and Canadian culture. And I am hoping to go to um, see the Walt Disney Amusement Park in Paris, France starting next month. The tickets are on sale when the park opens up on the 17th of June. I'm hoping to get my tickets real soon. I'm planning on doing a vlog to show you guys Paris culture. Since it's, I've never been to Paris before, I've always wanted to go there since I was a kid. So I'm really looking forward to showing you guys a Disney amusement park, which I've also never been to before. So stay tuned guys, toodaloo, and check out, keep watching for more videos.